This week, the hotel inspector faces a whole new challenge. See, that's crazy. Insane. No, a million pound makeover. It is the most difficult thing that I've ever done in my life. High on drama. Honestly, terrifies me. But is anyone thinking about the customer? No wardrobe. There's nowhere to put anything. Presumably you've got to just put a valance on that bed. This is going to be hard work. Poised regally over Ramsgate's historic Royal Harbour, Albion House. Once a summer retreat for young Queen Victoria, this listed landmark was facing an uncertain future till Gay and John Haynes rushed to the rescue. I love that building. I just think it's mm. such a beautiful piece of architecture in its mm. own right. So, really, all we can do is get it wrong. Its conversion to a boutique hotel is being project managed by Gay's close friends, husband and wife Ben and Emma Irvine. Ben, can we have that so that it lines up, please? Yeah, Emma wears the trousers. Ben, where are the yeah. drawings? Ben, can you get a measuring tape and tell me how wide it is? But uh, I've got some lovely skirts. <laughs> In their attempt to restore this regal residence to its former glory, Gay and John have literally bet their bottom dollar on their friends. I have bought the building. I have paid for the refurbishment. And where's this come from? That's Italian Carrara marble. Oh, my word. Yeah. Somewhere between 1.5 million and 1.75. They've left me absolutely penniless. All the elements of starting a hotel, something they've never, ever done before, and nor have we. But it was a very, very impetuous, not very well thought through <laughs> decision on our part, wasn't it? It was crazy. I'm not concerned by a lack of hotel experience. Really? Um, I'm not. We need to get bigger pillows. Didn't think about that, did we? I don't think you get bigger pillows. Pillows are standard size, no, surely. No, 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 no. It's going to be the best hotel in this area, we believe. I like to aim high. But aiming high doesn't come cheap. Hmm. Italian marble. Whose idea is that? I don't know. Someone who's got more money than sense, I think. <laughs> And the budget for the opulent update is now beginning to spiral out of control. That's the thing about these projects. You don't know how much they're going to cost until you've done them. After a year of rigorous renovations, Ben and Emma have missed the lucrative summer season, and Albion House still isn't ready to welcome guests. You know, we'd hoped very much that we would have it open by now, and, and we haven't. With deadlines coming and going, every day without a paying guest is costing them all dear. They have had to provide all the furniture and the crockery and cutlery, etc. So they've made a, you know, a substantial investment. And the potential for financial disaster is starting to sink in. Can you bring toilet paper? With the business still very much a work in progress, they've called in hotel expert Alex Polizzi for help. We need her help because we have no experience. I think the areas we need help, particularly kind of training, operations, marketing, I mean, I could just keep going, actually. I think there's just everything. I think we are in over our heads, but it's just how fast we're going to be able to get up to the surface of the water. I'm looking at a very handsome building. It doesn't look as if it's just about to open, however. Um, I'm hoping that they're further along inside than they seem to be from the outside. Aware they've delayed their launch, Alex is here to make sure they're ready for paying guests as quickly as possible. Hey! Hi. Hi. Let's go and have a look on it. Come on. Okay. So this is the reception. Yeah, reception, real fire. This is just the hotel door. So the bar has its own entrance because we would like reception to be very much focused on guests. Usually one likes to have everyone pass by one point. Ramsgate's no different from anywhere else. You'll get leery, drunken, yeah. vomity people who you don't really want coming straight into your bar and who can quite often be headed off at this point if there's right. someone intelligent at the reception desk. 
Plans for the restaurant area also feel undercooked. So this is, this is kind of dining area, seating. I like the idea of a kind of a sitting down living room kind of feel around the fireplaces. Can I understand something? So yeah. is this a dining room or a sitting room? I don't know. Answer the question. This is the dining room. There is dining in here. And this is the sitting room. Is that the sitting room? And that's the sitting no. room. No, the back. No, no but there is Actually, a snug can, at the I, back. I OK, look. This room, <laughs> that room and that room. <laughs> now this. I'm worried. <laughs> and the hotel inspector also spots a flaw in their plans for a carpet. See, that's crazy. Insane. No, it's good colour. Oh. Good colour carpet, though. I would never, ever in a million years put a carpet in a dining room. Got the carpet. Lovely. Carpet. First <laughs> Upstairs, the drawing room suite, priced at £220 per night, should be the Albion's crowning glory. This is a lovely, big, gorgeous, glamorous room. It's probably the only room that we know that Queen Victoria definitely occupied at one time. I like the light. I like the space. Yeah. Very nice. The big picture looks good, but the details that matter are a different story. I am amazed that you would put a bath without a shower attachment. Oh. Even though there's a separate chair? But yeah. Can I not have a bath and wash my hair at the same time? Oh, I see. Emma's background as an architect might mean she has a vision for the building. We missed that one, Ben. Good. Glad, I, do it. glad I could help. But it's clear that she and engineer husband Ben are far from designing the perfect customer experience. I find it weird that you think that that is a hanging space. Why? How much stuff I mean, are you going to have? Well, darling, well, I don't know, but I'm obviously not coming here for more than two nights. <laughs> Emma, what is wrong with, a, with an antique wardrobe with drawers? We just didn't buy those. We bought, we bought um, okay. antique chest of drawers. The ever-increasing list of problems means the boutique hotel dream is in danger of falling apart. And with the build already four months behind schedule, Alex believes that Ben and Emma are going to have to pull themselves together. You've had quite a lot of rope because you haven't yeah. had a date that you started accepting guests. Mm. Otherwise, yeah. I think it's very it's easy to get to the day. We've been doing day, that for is... months, these two. Oh, I know. Without a dedicated deadline, the race to get the hotel launched is destined to limp along even longer. Alex is keen to set a date with a special occasion in her sights. So your birthday celebrations are? We have two and a bit weeks. Two and a bit weeks. Yeah. So I would think of this as your opening day. With John's birthday the target, will Ben and Emma be able to deliver the perfect present? My goodness, I'm very, very nervous. There's still quite a lot to do. There's still quite a lot of confusion. There's still quite a lot of debate and argument. There's a lot riding on this, and I think they need to get their acts together. I think the most useful thing that she said was, you've got to have a date now and you've got to stick with it. And I think that, you know, gives us the confidence to say to Ben and Emma, get on with it now. We've got two and a half weeks. That's our line in the sand at the moment. The Albion House in Ramsgate. Gay Haynes has sunk her life savings into funding the renovations of this historic home into a luxury hotel. But despite a year of blood, sweat and tears from friends Ben and Emma, this regal residence still resembles a building site. So if you were a betting man, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when would we have our first overnight guest? <clears throat> I don't know. But with disagreements over decor, They've agreed to take it out. Well, I hope they do. Of course they do. You didn't need to mention it. You know, you Why do you think I said that? Because, I, because it, you know, it's classy. Hotel inspector Alex Polizzi has been called on site to mentor this million pound project towards its much delayed opening. One week later, she's back. But will it be a happy return? I'm very focused on the fact that in just over a week's time, John is supposed to be holding his birthday party here. Certainly from the outside, I don't see a massive difference. But inside, things do seem a little brighter. Ooh, look, colour on the walls. <laughs> Hi. My goodness, <laughs> how exciting. 
Well, you've come a long way, but have you come far enough for next week? I, I feel that we've been through a hell of a lot getting this project to where it's at, and this last few weeks has been pretty much hell on earth. Um, we'll have the decorating done, we'll have the lights up, we'll have the heating on. There's about five on. minutes leeway on either side of every job that needs yeah. to be done. You know, the tiniest detail omitted, the whole house of cards comes down. Although preparations for the launch party seem to be moving in the right direction, Ben and Emma have news that might prove a backwards step. They're now questioning whether Albion House should even have a restaurant at all. We're uh, really unsure about the food. Honestly, terrifies me. No, no short of absolutely middle of the night sweats. This is now you don't know about, You're which right. is where the fear comes no, no, in. It is. Right, yeah. It is, because when I look at the numbers, they're getting so big, <laughs> I'm thinking, shit, you know, we have a bad couple of months, the whole thing is closed. Either tell people that you are aiming to be this luxurious location in the heart of historic Ramsgate, where everything you want, you will find here, or we, you are saying... We're a b and We're a b and <laughs> We have kind of gone from not doing a restaurant to doing a restaurant to kind of cooling off on the idea again. I think you have to have at least a minimum restaurant offering. Okay. I really do not think okay. it's enough here in this location at the moment. With Ben and Emma questioning the need for a restaurant, Alex is worried they're again missing the most important element at the heart of any hotel, the customer. It's a big commitment, uh, putting on a food offering um, and you know, it's an area where you can lose a lot of money. We've had endless debates about feeding our guests, and my feeling from the start was, I think it's too ambitious to open a hotel and open a fancy restaurant at the same time. Alex feels the couple have spent so long in hard hats, they've not thought enough about what they need to do to make their guests happy. I think you need a bit more help, and I think you need a bit more help on the food front. At some point, you have got to stop having the head of developers and start yeah. thinking of yourself as managers. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a bit nervous for them because I think Emma's very good, but she's still not a hotelier. Uh, and that's the bit that worries me most. To try and convince Ben and Emma of the importance of customer service, Alex is sending them to London. Can you just double check that was responded to, the clemmy one? Five years ago, the hotel inspector helped turn around the fortunes of Justin Salisbury's Brighton-based artist residence. For us, it was almost a godsend to have somebody, you know, as experienced, you know, as Alex come in and give us advice. Now, he and partner Charlie have just opened their third boutique hotel, this time in the capital. Hello. Hi, Hello. I'm Emma. Hi. 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 Like Albion House, this is a small hotel with bespoke bedrooms. Wow. Gosh, beautiful. But unlike Ben and Emma's building, it has the guest experience at the very centre of each room. We encourage staff to put themselves in the guest's shoes and how would they feel? And then from there, how would they like to be treated? Mm. And its restaurant is a key component of their business model. I think it's so important, especially in the off season, mm. um, Mm. when the weather's not there, you know, mm. to create somewhere where people can have a mini break. Kind of almost going to a hotel as a destination place. Without food and beverage, really, it is mm. B&B. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Head chef Michael Bremner has some sage words of advice. So what we're here today really to understand is a bit about offering food and what that entails. I'm a massive fan of sustainability yeah. and all that sorts of things. So as long as your produce is good, you've got a chef that's passionate, that's all you really need. Yeah. We need something that's fairly low risk. It's going to sell to the, to the local public. Unfortunately, there's no such thing as low risk. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's it's all low risk. And it's all, um, <laughs> it's brutal. Every now and then you need home truths. Uh, and our home truth is we need to do food. At least we know that it is going to be tough. There's a couple of um, moments today where I thought, yeah, you know, I can do that. Fired up and feeling positive, the couple return to Ramsgate to prepare for their own hotel's launch and a date with destiny. We're celebrating my birthday 
I've got all, all my close family and friends coming down, and they won't have seen any of the hotel, and so it's very exciting for all of us. What do you think of them? I think they're great. I think they look even better with glass and bottles on them. But with just hours till the guests arrive, it's bedlam. OK, do you think that works? I don't. I think maybe this should turn 90 Darling, degrees. Darling, that's the last thing to do, no. is get all this shit out. No, no, it's not. I'm just going to ignore you. Careful! Come on, then, help me. What are you doing? Look, you haven't put the things oh, on no, there. Oh, no, where's the cup? Emma, you really need to make sure you put these underneath. Put the coffee down. No, please. Engage brain. Listen, we haven't had a domestic That's since a bit of domestic the start. Abuse. So, let's not start now, eh? While the bar is slowly coming together. Upstairs, it's a totally different story. Rooms. Um, none of them are finished. The decision is made to cancel the guests' overnight stay. My preference is to keep it in the bar rather than showing them all the chaos that's happening out there. Though they've succeeded in transforming the bar for John's party, Ben and Emma have missed another deadline and a chance to showcase the hotel. We would love to have had the for guests to stay in tonight, and in an ideal world, we'd have all gone into the rooms tonight and we'd all got up tomorrow and we'd all have had breakfast in the breakfast room. But it's not through a lack of effort or a lack of trying on the part of Ben and Emma. If they could have done it, they would have done. After hearing about the failure to launch, Alex has crash-landed back in Ramsgate. She's on a mission to get the Albion off the ground, whether Ben and Emma like it or not. What I think they must understand is that nobody can afford to open a hotel and wait until the paint is dry on every single wall before welcoming in guests. You have to start making some money. And if they're not ready at this stage, and I think they have to ask themselves why, and ask themselves whether they really want to be running it as a hotel, or is it some kind of glorified house project? To make sure the bedrooms get a proper test drive, Alex is checking in, and she's bringing company. I'm starting today with some friendly people who are going to road test the rooms for me. Until now, they have been designed on a piece of paper. No one has tried them out, seen if the furniture's in the right place, how it works. And I think that would be useful feedback to give Emma and Ben. With the guests on the way, Ben and Emma try to make some sense out of the chaos. I think we're as ready as we can be for Alex. It's got to be done at some point, so... Well, is that point have to be now, 10 minutes before Alex arrives? Hopefully, it will be showing at its very best. God, look at those windows. Where is Ben? Going up on that fireplace. Ben! How much time do I have? Oh, my God. You're not wrong. That is bloody heavy. Natasha! Could you put on a big, huge pot of coffee? We've got one shot at this. You don't want people to come and to be disappointed. This well, it's because they're going to make a bloody mess, because they're all going to be covered in paint. Hey! Hi, darling. How are you? So glad to see you both. And I'll be back Hi. here. I love this colour. Good yeah. choice. You like it. It's not yeah. man cavey. No. Good. It's kind of Regency. That's what we were thinking. It's lovely. This is looking lovely. I wasn't sure how far behind you're going to be. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've raced ahead to get presentable um, for our first guest. OK, should I show you the bar now? Yes. OK, come on. I love it. Clearly, you have taste. First impressions are good, but there's still a long list to get through before the guests arrive. Can you phone Jonathan, the fireplace guy, and ask him what we do with this slate? And it's getting longer. Light bulbs on your list there, Ben. Yeah. Out to impress hotel royalty, Ben and Emma have booked Alex into the drawing room suite, but it's hardly fit for a queen. We'll have this ready for 3 o'clock when you're checking in. <laughs> I can check in a bit late. <laughs> There's a table in here, presumably, to come in. Yeah, coffee table, Ben. Can you put that on the list? It's downstairs, I believe. With a similar story in the other bedrooms, the list is growing. Ben, lampshades on the list there. Are you going to have a door stop, darling? Yeah. yeah. Ben, can you put that on your list? Sorry, please. 
Do you want me to have the phone? Shall I do the list? Yeah, okay. Thank you. The chaotic catalogue of unfinished jobs is clearly cause for concern. Worried another deadline is slipping, Alex steps in. What I'm just feeling is that everywhere we go, there is there's just a mirror, just yeah. a thing. Well, all those just, 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 let's get a room done. And the first person to check in gets that room. There's an awful lot to do. It's all little tiny things. But actually, I think it's quite important. The method that I've said to them to do is key, because otherwise, they are still going to have 100 different things in every single room. Coming together? Kind of. Oh. There's still just lots of bits. Kind of give me a glimmer of hope. Time's running out. In less than an hour, Alex's guests are due to check in. I'm feeling extremely nervous at the moment. It's very hectic in there. We need to get another carpet fitter here. There's still a lot to do. Can you help me here? Time is ticking. This has gone right to the wire. <laughs> Alex Polizzi is in historic Ramsgate, assisting at the birth of a brand new boutique hotel. After a year-long million pound restoration, Albion House has become a labor of love for first-time hoteliers Ben and Emma Irvine. Big moment getting a bed into the hotel. No, hang on, don't bend it. You're not talking about bending the bed. After missing numerous deadlines, Alex has demanded the couple open their doors today. She's arranged for a select group of guests to stay and road test the Albion. But with dusk starting to fall, things aren't looking too bright for check-in. These guests are waiting in a cafe down the road, waiting to meet with me, and I have got to buy Emma some time because the rooms are definitely still not ready. You will be the very first guests to be welcomed into the building. All comments and suggestions gratefully received. I will ask you at the end of it how much you think you would be prepared to pay for your room. Please be honest. Unable to stall any longer, Emma and Ben finally open the doors to their first real customers. Welcome to the house. Um, I was going to just take your bags and put them to the side, and then we'll sit down in front of the fire and have some Prosecco and afternoon tea. That's awesome. That's that sounds great. OK. The guests have been hand-picked by Alex for their knowledge of the hospitality industry and their understanding of the importance of providing a good customer experience. Cheers. Cheers to you. She's hoping their input will demonstrate just where Ben and Emma have been going wrong. While the guests are given a warm welcome downstairs... So, this room still requires a bit to do. I hope you can forgive the, the, the minor elements that are entirely finished. There is still no shower screen in here and the bathroom is also still dirty. I can show you what I'm going to put up on the wall. This is not on the wall. Vegan <laughs> There's no door handle. Do you think that matters? I think that they are suffering from brain freeze. I can see that this is going to be hard work. And also, we need things like loo paper. I'm not taking anyone into a room without loo paper. Oh, that's my line in the sand. <laughs> With the essentials in place, the bedrooms are finally ready. To get a real sense of their reactions, Alex and the fledgling hoteliers will secretly watch on from metres away. First to check in, Airline steward, Jay. OK, so he's coming into the room. Can we turn, can we turn it up? I can't hear him. He's not talking yet. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> That's why I can't hear him. A man with many air miles under his belt, he's well used to landing in quality accommodation. It's a nice view. Very nice view. I guess this needs to be screwed. Oh, shit. It's all right. It's not the worst thing that could happen. Oh, I know. I guess this is due to them not having finished yet. That was on your list, Ben. Same with the door. A mirror, it's needed a mirror. We also need a mirror. There's no mirror in the bathroom. That was all right. Next, travel blogger Sharon. Oh, this is a lovely looking room. Her job, to document the pros and cons of the new hotel bedrooms. No wardrobe. Now, that's an interesting concept. 
The beds look fantastic. That's a serious bed. These are quite quirky. It's almost like being on a... Um, train. The old trains with yeah. a, a little luggage rack. Um, but all in all, a very, very nice room. See? All compliments. Mm -hmm. Let's do the next okay. one. Brilliant. Last to see their room, local hoteliers Tara and Paul. It's lovely. They run a hotel just up the road from the That's Albion beautiful. and know better than anyone what the local market demands. Oh, fantastic views. Yeah, stunning view. Binoculars are a very nice touch. <laughs> nice bathroom, well decorated. Beautiful shower. <laughs> Can we have one of these at home? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nowhere to put anything. There's no shelf. We need a shelf to put your... We have it, but it's just not up. That's not a good excuse, but... Put it somewhere. Uh, I was looking in the drawer to see if there's any sugar. Oh, shit, no sugar. Oh, lack of checking, lack of checking. That's all really beautiful. I think they've been the toughest, but they've actually made some quite valid points and points that I've made to you, storage-wise. Storage in bathroom, very important. The bedrooms have been given a thorough examination and provided some much-needed food for thought. Next on Ben and Emma's plate, dinner. Joining the guests in the restaurant, owners Gay and John, along with some of their friends, all keen to celebrate opening night. But will the extra numbers provide problems for the kitchen staff and new chef, Ryan? Jeff, try to squeeze another two in. Could you do it? The couple were unsure whether to launch a restaurant at the same time as the hotel. Now, I have you over here on this table. OK. See. Alex is hoping the storm outside is a positive sign. I think uh, it proves my point that on a night like this, you definitely want to be able to go downstairs and eat in the restaurant, rather than braving the wild weather outside. First floor of your Albion house. woo -hoo. But they didn't want to do food, and I've persuaded them. And now let's see if their food passes muster. That's the next big test. But restaurant novice Ben is struggling to get his head around the menu. What is chamula? It yeah. is something that I was told <laughs> about a day ago. As things start hotting up in the kitchen... Let's serve all six at the same time. Let's not change the system now, so let's wait. Service, please. Well done, Ryan. Looks great. The first dishes are served at Albion House. Thank you. Now I have the hake for you. With the food going down a storm, it proves Alex's idea of having the restaurant has really paid off. I'm very happy with mine. I love the beetroot. Delicious. Perfectly, perfectly cooked. Ben and Emma have managed their first night as hoteliers. I'm really impressed at you both for, at the end of this agonisingly long day, for still being charming and nice and friendly. Oh, and, um, and, I mean, that gives me a lot of faith in the future, because I think that is what it takes. It's attrition, this line of work. <laughs> Next morning, Albion House wakes up to a beautiful day. It's the first time Ben and Emma have had overnight guests sleeping in their rooms. I think the beds are hopefully as comfortable as we think they are. I think any hotelier needs to invest in good beds. And it was an excellent bed, lovely linen as well. The room is perfect, the amenities are very good. They really had a lot of attention to detail. With the rooms passing the grade... Yes, tuck in the saucepan, tuck it all in, bang, bang, bang. Attention turns to the all-important breakfast. Where's the orange yeah. juice? Man up, babes. Yeah, no, I'm absolutely <laughs> fine. Guests Tara and Paul, hoteliers themselves, know just how crucial breakfast can be. Yeah, if you give them a good breakfast, it, it could change the whole experience, yeah. Brilliant, and, and obviously the reverse is true as well. Yeah. If you don't, then you're going to pay for it. All right, request from Emma to make the bacon really crispy. Are they going to be all right? Yeah. I hope so. I think they're all well prepared. Do you know, I can smell the bacon, which is making me very hungry. 
It's on the back, I think, for filling the fish options. And I've seen it time and time again. Every hotel I've ever opened, the first breakfast is just agony. And it's no different for the Albion, as the first lot of poached eggs fail to make the plate. We had a poached eggs calamity. Oh, did you? <laughs> can be very demanding in a place like this, and I think um, they have to get used to dealing with difficult guests, because God knows plenty of them will come their way. The scramble to get breakfast out is leaving Emma walking on eggshells. Let's just take our time, take a deep breath. You're happy. Uh -huh. With just one cover remaining, something fishy is brewing with the Benedict. Uh, can you pass the smoked salmon, please? No, 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 no one's ordered smoked salmon. They have mixed Benedict. Mixed Benedict is not smoked salmon. It's not salmon. Salmon and smoked salmon, isn't it? Yeah. Really would prefer if you weren't filming me right now. It's just so you can wrap around. As the debate slowly simmers, the last breakfast is served. Oh, Minus the salmon. The chef should be able to do six breakfasts without making quite such a production of it, I feel. Very good. Yeah. It's time for the guinea pig guests to reveal to Alex how much they're willing to pay. Ben and Emma are banking on an average room rate of £150 for bed and breakfast. We actually said the same price without talking to each other. Yeah. Gosh, that's good. Which is? 120. OK. Darling, Sharon, you next. Yes. My figure was 140. That's very reasonable. Why do you think you priced it slightly higher than they did? I think it's not just a normal hotel bedroom. It has had so much thought put into it, and it's a pleasure to stay in it. So, Jay, what about you? I was thinking about the same price. Gosh, uh, and I think that's very nice. Well, I'm really, really grateful for your feedback. Thank you so much for spending the evening with us. It's You're been welcome. a pleasure. Thank you. Lovely. Real pleasure. As the guests depart, Alex wants to pass on the good news. I asked everybody how much they'd be prepared to pay for your rooms, and I'm giving you £400 for, th for the three rooms that were stayed in. I'm not paying my, for my own room. I think you can give me that. Wow. That's very kind. But I'm did... hanging on to that. Impressed by the couple's first night performance, it's time for Alex to reveal the final act of her launch plan. Having promised to generate much-needed publicity, she's persuaded some of the most influential travel writers in the country to visit the hotel. If they like what they see, it'll be a chance for Albion House to really hit the headlines, but only if Ben and Emma can deliver. I've got some quite important people coming. I mean, I've got Condé Nast and I've got GQ and I've got Fiona Duncan from oh The my Telegraph. God. <laughs> they want to see a hotel that looks as if they can write about it. And I don't want them to come if they're going to get the wrong impression. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's a kind of one-shot wonder. Yeah. So I actually feel really quite sick now. I think we should have a little sit down. After a year of renovations, Albion House in Ramsgate finally entertained its first ever paying guests. Ben and Emma may have survived that baptism of fire, but the real test is yet to come. The next people through the door could make or break the hotel. It's a pretty big day for them, and I do not want Albion House to appear inadequate in any way. Alex has invited some of the most influential travel writers in the country to an exclusive press launch. I just want us to show as well as we possibly can today. If they can wow the journalists, it's a massive opportunity for Ben and Emma to get invaluable press coverage for their fledgling business. These people are very well respected, so we've got to get it right today. But after Alex's guinea pigs revealed a long list of problems, they haven't got long to put everything right. I've got until 2 o'clock when my guests come to make sure that everything is shipshape and bristle fashion. It's all a bit of a kick scramble. All the rooms need to be made up again and tidied. I want all the lights plugged in. No, those don't work, do they? I don't know. I need all the new tables in. What you need, you've just, you've done, you haven't put it over right. Look here. 
Is he busy, busy, busy? You know, they've got a very bad habit of just pulling people off one job that they're trying to do to try and get them to do something else. And then move you on to painting that fire surround. The pace of change is pretty glacial at the moment. Ben just looks like he's been smacked up against a cement wall at 100 miles an hour. He's got that kind of slightly cross-eyed glaze. I feel like there's nothing I can do about quite a few things, so I think in a way I'm like, OK, just enjoy this bit. I feel quite relaxed. They're both still charming and calm, but ineffective. They just don't have another gear at the moment. Honestly, darling, it's like trying to hurt kittens. I think they're, you know, they'll either like it or they won't. A few frantic hours later, and Albion House is finally ready to welcome the travel media VIPs. I must say, everyone's kind of pulled together really nicely. This all looks lovely. You've got the fires burning, you've got candles lit, the bar's looking great. So all in all, it's fab, and I'm so excited and really pleased for both of you. The stage is set for Ben and Emma's big chance to impress the press. I want it to be full of heart and character and personality. And I'm hoping that the people that are running it are going to be personalities as well. What I'm hoping to see today is that they have done something welcoming, tasteful and interesting that will attract people to come down from London to experience a bit of seaside life here in Kent. Welcome to Albion House. This has been a fairly long journey for us, but we're almost there. And we'd love to show you everything we've done so far. So. But things don't get off to the best of starts. Presumably you've got to just put a valance on that bed. Before going further downhill. I hate to tell you, but this is just driving me mad. <laughs> that would really upset me if I was staying here. I'd spend the whole time trying to, you know, get out a screwdriver and put it straight. <laughs> As the excuses start to flow. Uh, we're not hoteliers. Well, we are now. You are. <laughs> we are now. You don't say that. Fortunately, Emma's on hand to steer the tour in a more positive direction. You know, we're new to this business, so we just feel like we'll do it kind of step by step if we can. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's fabulous. Oh, yes. I'm really glad you like it. Really, really does. glad. I'm happily stay here. Oh, good. So far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. We have to give you a drink and something to eat first. <laughs> The Albion's charms seem to be shining through as Ben and Emma play the perfect hosts. We're just really looking forward to opening. We're so excited. That's what you want to do when you walk into a hotel. You want to go, <gasps> Time for Alex to find out if the critics are impressed. They're a charming couple. They're obviously enthused about it. Um, they, they strike me as very sensible people, and I think this could be a fantastic asset for Amsgo. And I, I, I'm, if I was them, I'd be very proud. What do you think of the place? I think it's really got legs. Good! I think it's exciting. I can't wait to write about it. And I just keep looking at that view, this town that I don't know and that I want to know more about. It's close to London. I think it's a great new destination for a, for a weekend away. The event has been a success. Alex has one last piece of advice for Albion House. I just spotted this place. I think the overwhelming impression from everyone is that they love it. So that's really good. You know, that you've got a had a resounding success. Everyone likes you. That doesn't surprise me. Is there any worry that we get good PR and good marketing and it brings in a wave of people and we're not ready and we're, we're not organised enough? Or do you, what do you think the timing is of that? Darling, I just, just honestly, I keep trying to push you off this cliff and you are hanging <laughs> on to your fingernail. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Man up. <laughs> Man <laughs> up. I agree. But Gay's got five shifts a week, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it takes. The building is almost there but they've still got to open it as a hotel. And I think they're going to find that an enormous challenge. You know, they've come an awfully long way since my first visit here. But this is just the beginning of their story.
one month on and Albion House is now fully open for business, but only just. Hello Albion House, we are open, yes. Alex said that I was kind of hanging on to the edge of the cliff and I feel like I've let go, but there's like a little ledge <laughs> underneath and now I'm hanging on there. Well, what day of the week would you like to check in? If you're asking me would I call myself a hotelier, I don't think I'm ready for that yet. Oh no, one review. Wonderful. <laughs> oh my god. The building is beautiful and the hosts are superb and the food is excellent. What more could you ask for? For me, it is without doubt the most difficult thing that I've ever done in my life and probably ever will do. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. We'd have bloody hotels everywhere. How do you feel about being live on a booking site? I feel terrified. Yeah, I do feel a bit terrified now. Yeah, when you look outside now, and it's just, it's beautiful. I think with that and with this building, how can we go wrong?